or a curve since I'm stretching it all out this way. So there's my basic plan. So then when I lay in the primers, I'm thinking the same way, same thought process as any of these other ones is the next layer of gold. <laughs> so the sky up here is the only thing that's going to be left single layer. Maybe a little bit of this edge back here where it's real bright. Maybe some of that over there. Let's start where the darkest part of it be. Just right over here. So I'm letting a lot of this spongy texture have a voice. Sort of it. Um, notice the speed at which I'm working. I'm, I'm getting it on there. I'm not hesitating. I'm not being nitpicky. I'm just letting it go. And out here, notice I'm using it. It's starting to dry up. The sponge is starting to dry, so I'm, I'm like dry brushing it. more bits of color out, but very faintly. And I'm letting, you know, I'm letting stuff like that just happen, you know. Not, <coughs> these marks are not on purpose, it's just what's happening. And now then I go back over with the dry part and it lifts up where that blob was. That's kind of what I'm talking about with the, the unique properties of how oh, acrylic works since it dries so fast. We can just stuff like that that makes heavy accidents. Okay, so we got like this cushy tree like shape back here. Now I'm gonna need some other. This is the next darkest shadow here. So I'm gonna do that next. And this is all the this is all the primer I've got. I've just moved it on the corner like that. Take mm -hmm. much. This is a lot. This is probably going to do that whole shadowy part. Here it's starting to dry out. So I'm dabbing away at it, letting it fade up into this lighter section. I know it doesn't look exactly like the leafy, grassy patterns that are in the photo, but it's generally close enough as far as like the whole picture. If you work fast enough, you can really get really get a lot out of the sponge after it's half dry. Part of this over here is still a little bit sticky. I can feel it. That's okay. I mean, you can always, you know, a tiny, tiny little bit here. Mm -hmm. You can always dip again and apply more. It's easier than applying too much to start with and then you're like, oh, what do I do with it? Where do I put it? You know. Then I'll lay this in here like this. Okay, so there 
there's the other painting for that one. A couple minutes, that'll be drying up. Just put pastel on this first. And when I'm doing shadow areas in landscapes, instead of following religiously what exactly I see here, I use this as a guide for general values and temperatures for the overall scene. I use this, I use what happened here in the underpainting as my little detail guide. So I'll take like where these patterns are in the underpainting, and that's where I put the rest of my values as they go on. Because I find that that, that way it helps me utilize the underpainting itself what's been going on with it. See, a lot of these textures that happen are showing up when I glaze the pastel stick over it, creating these little shapes and organic looking things that you know, I'd never be able to actually get in there and draw that on purpose. It's just one of those accident things. It goes great in a landscape, you know, where you've got plants and stuff that just make textures. I'm just using the side. I'm just glazing it on flatly. And it's the texture that the primer made. So it's giving me all these illusions of tiny little detailed things happening. Is that that brown that you're using now? This one now is kind of a dark green. Oh, I see. Okay. This was the brown that I right. used over here. This is a cooler, cooler sort of green. Glazing so over very lightly these darks that I have back here. And I'm not trying to obliterate them, or cover them up. I'm just trying to um, blend what's there with some of this. And this isn't even the last step back here. I'm going to find another brighter, lighter, and go over it and try to get. Try to get that feeling of the directional lights that are. So it's kind of an olive green. Yeah, it's kind of a mint to dark, sort of warm green. Kind of. It's not really what I'm looking for here, but it's. it's trying to keep the warm stuff in front, and as I go back here, I'm going to pick up some of those brighter, cooler greens. I'm still working dark to light. I really like leaving a lot of the yellow in the sky um, because in certain conditions the sky will look really kind of warm. And usually it's close, closer to the horizon it gets, the warmer it gets. I mean, it, it, the, you know, the advantage of a light touch is, mm -hmm. is because you can always put more mm -hmm. if you think, oh, oh, yeah, that's exactly the color I need there. And then you can go a little heavier. But when you start off, it might not be quite right. Mm -hmm. And this is not quite right, but it's a good base for underneath some of the lighter blues and stuff that will go in there. I'm also trying to keep in mind the paths of the light like from the road to the side grass, so that you don't have like a bright patch and then on the road there's shadow and it's like, yeah. how would that work? You know, to keep the keep the continuity of the light, how it's falling going there. I guess it's I guess it's these trees over here. The sun's coming through this way. It just like, must be a oh, it's shadowy. So. Shadowy here because of light coming in here, and then these trees are the right height so that the sun's shining over them on the field there. So even in a landscape, I kind of work all over the place. You think, well, are you done with the tree? No, and I just got distracted by the road and I wanted to get it out. Another nice thing to an underpainting like this is that when you have some golds, some reds, some vari variations in the values on underpainting. You can take one pastel stick, and when I'm glazing it over here and over some of the other 
colors that I've already put down, and then I glaze it up over here, it looks different. Right. It's yeah. not yeah. showing through differently. I've done these sorts of roads before, and so um, I've learned that this sort of a pinkish light works really nicely over the yellow to um, kind of kind of cools down the yellow part just enough to make it look like sunlit gravel. This is like a this is a new pastel, I think. It's just like a light yellow. Oh. Um, it's just that the green, the green that's in this photo, the photo is like really color enhanced. Mm -hmm. That green just looks a little fake to me. It's like this one. Yeah. I'll show you how it looks. I can maybe put some of that in here, but it's it's almost yeah. neon. See yeah. that? It's like yeah. ooh, you know. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll do a little dab of it just because I started it. But still, to make that line just this color, it would have been like, ooh, ooh, you know, that's not real. So see, I'm mixing my green by mix, mixing, I'm mixing my yellow green by putting this green and then yellow over it. It's lighter. Getting that sunlit. And still trying to let some of the prime show through as well. I'm letting some of this some of these light spots kind of kind of intermingle with the shadow areas because they do that when it's leaves from trees and stuff that are casting the shadows. You have brighter spots and then you have sort of muted spots. Yeah, that kind of basic sort of the yellow glazing over this. It's still this is still cooler than that primer that's underneath. Mm -hmm. right. But, right. but it's uh, brightening up the greens to make it look a little more sunlit mm -hmm. those grasses. Uh, okay, now that background line of trees really needs to lighten up. It's too dark. So let me find it. This is, this is also a new pastel, so it's pretty hard. Mm -hmm. So it's great glazing. I can do that, you know, if I were to take like Terry Ludwig, yeah. But I would just yeah. completely cover up what's back there. But I want it to blend. I want it to sort of take what's there and, and uh, smooth it in and, and blend with it. So the new pastels are great for that. And the Rembrandts, too. Is that blue? I can't tell. It's kind of, it's that same, it's that same blue, blue, greenish blue, blue, pale, pale blue, blue green mm -hmm. that I use on the shadows of the cow. I'm actually noticing when I step back, I notice that this is still, this is like way too warm mm -hmm. for the foreground. And I, I need more actual green in here. So I need to find like this warm green. Oops. Put here. So now see, I'm, now I'm pressing a little harder because I want to get rid of more of that red up there. Not all of it, but more than, more than I had. It's also shadowy. Shadowy grasses, even though it is in the foreground, at least made a little more cool than it had been. Okay, now, mostly, I need to get that, I need to cool that down because there's still way too much red showing. Um, so, let me think.
filters like that, they're going to be a little darker. Kind of have like leaf hole, like sky holes that have other leaves back there that are catching light. Yeah. <laughs> 